yeah. yeah. Can you just talk about the different types of strings that are available in the market? Definitely. So yeah. there's, you know, there's well over 200 different strings in the market. So it's okay. a very, uh, very confusing market. It, it's tough to know what, what string is right for each player. Right. Generally, if you break it down, there's two main types of strings. There's what we call multi-filaments right. and then there's what we call monofilaments. Right. So monofilaments, you know, like a Luxalon, for example, it's generally one material and that one material helps produce more durability, uh, a little bit more power and spin or multi-filament is a collection of different materials, tends to be very soft, like a natural gut, very easy on the arm, absorbs a lot of the, you know, the vibration. Uh, it's good for feel. Okay. So that, that's, that's generally kind of the, the two strings. And within each one of those multifilament, monofilament, you probably have an, another 50 to 100 choices. So we can right. get really in, into the weeds on this, right. but that's kind of high level, the, the okay. two main differences, monofilament, multifilament. Okay. So even when it comes to natural gut, you get multifilament and monofilament? Uh, no, natural gut would be a, a, a multifilament. A, a multi-filament. So really? naturally that has many different fibers in, okay. in, into the string. Okay, so the it. characteristics of a natural gut, you know, very absorbent uh, right. on shock, really good right. feel, good touch. Right. Right. So somebody like a Pete Sampras Tempest, in the old right. days yeah. would use all natural gut. Right. Or right, right. Na now there's not one professional that uses yeah. all natural gut. Right. So you see, you see a lot of professionals today either using all Luxalon, which is a right. monofilament or right. a hybrid. Right. A hybrid is, half monofilament, half multifilament. And that's what Roger oh, Federer see. uses. Okay. So Roger Federer grew up using all natural gut like Sampras, but as okay. the game evolved, he needed more spin. He right. needed that extra ball pocketing and bite. Right. So he switched to Luxalon, and, but he uses a hybrid. Right. So a, little, a little bit of both worlds. Yeah. Right. So he has, uh, he has Luxalon on the mains and then uh, something else on the cross, right? A natural gut. Natural on but, the Okay. What's it? I mean, he he's a unique uh, case study, but he actually has the uh, natural gut on the mains and the and the lux on the cross, on the which, cross. which is wow, yeah, which is kind of flip. Generally, yeah. people have the lux on the main and the natural Correct. gut on the cross. It, the reason is if you put natural gut on the main, it's gonna break pretty fast. But right. obviously, Roger Roger doesn't care about that. He <laughs> restrings his racket every six games, so right. Right. it's not it's not a problem for him. But most people put the the monofilament on the mains. Um, wow, that's interesting. So if you, yeah, and you talk about Luxalon, between the top 100 players, ATP yeah. and WTA, 85% of those players use Luxalon. Luxalon, right. So and it's, what's it's, so special about Luxalon? I mean, so I know it's, it's polyester, yeah. right? It, it's, uh, it's not exactly polyester, but it's, it's um, different materials that, that kind of act like polyester. Okay. Um, it, in Luxalon, maybe you can uh, link your, your uh, followers to some videos on the Luxalon website. They have some incredible videos of, of okay. what materials they actually put in there. Okay. It's all uh, manufactured in Belgium. It's, it's, it's a state-of-the-art facility. So right. they're always trying to use new materials in there. But what makes Luxalon so special so the string itself um, provides a lot of power, but great feel. So back in the old days, the, the monofilaments out there made out of a material called Kevlar. Yes. You and I used to play with that. Yes, yes. So that Ke Kevlar is great. A lot of durability. Yeah. But boy, it is hard on your arm. So you yeah. can create tennis elbow. So right. that's, that kind of string is not on the market anymore because okay. a company like Luxalon has been able to create a softer monofilament. So Got this... It. This string has kind of some characteristics of Kevlar, you know, the, uh, the durability, the power, because what happens is the monofilament strings, once you make contact, they snap back into place much faster than a multifilament. So okay. naturally it's, you can think of it like a catapult. Right. So, so the balls on your string bed right. and then it, it, right. it, it, it launches quicker. Right. Right. And that's There's like a recoil, right? Yeah. There's a re really yeah. fast recoil. Yeah, so that's kind of the, the, ma the magic of Luxalon is that it's a durable string and it pr produces this extraordinary amount of power. And um, that's why you see so many top players use it. And, and, and if you listen to, you know, Guga Querton, one of the first guys, or Carlos Moya, one of the first guys to use this kind of string, they said it changed the game. And oh, that's right. why you saw Roger Federer then have to switch to it and, right. and bring that into his game. Serena Williams, another example, she, she recently switched to Luxalon right. probably five or six years ago. She was always using natural gut, but to keep up with the, the right. modern game, she had to go to this string. And, and that string, it's, it's incredible what it can do in terms of the power, 
the spin potential. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's it's definitely changed the way people play tennis. Right. Okay. And any particular reason that uh, Federer uses the uh, the the Luxon on the crosses? He thinks there's a it's a little bit more feel for him. So people oh, okay. tend to think the main string is the, is the string you feel a little bit more on the string right. bed. Right. You know, but but he's he's in a whole different world. Right. The things he can feel on a racket versus right. all of us. Right. It's, right. it's it's pretty pretty incredible he's the only guy that we know that does it that way okay. because he can uh you know he can hit a ball anywhere place it anywhere so he has that kind of in, sure. in, incredible uh just uh ability to sure. throw a racket sure and if i'm not mistaken uh Djokovic also uses Luxlon, right Djokovic. yeah Nadal? he sure does yeah yep uh nadal he used it for a part of his career but now okay. he uses a, a babylon uh, okay. monofilament string but yeah Djokovic right. uses it uh, you know, Burdich, uh, I could go on and on. I mean, all the top, all the top players, um, Sissipas. Okay. Um, yeah, I mentioned Serena on the women's side, but yeah, like I said, 85% of the top hundred players, men's and women's are, right. are using it. So I could send right. you a list. It might be interesting to, to share with your, your students and your viewers. Of yeah, sure. I'd like to see strings. Yeah. I, I actually yeah. did. I, I did a search, uh, on, uh, on the strings and I, I saw that quite a few of them, you know, use Luxalon. Yeah. Uh, but when it comes to these polyester strings, I'm uh, sorry, you said Luxalon is not polyester, right? Yeah. It, I mean, it's a, it's a monofilament material. Um, okay. it, it's sort of like polyester. You could kind okay. of think about it that way, but right. it's a different material. It's not okay. exactly polyester. It's, it's different materials that they've been able to put together to create okay. these strings. And, and these strings, I mean, because they're so durable and they, they stay on the racket for so long, uh, I guess you've got to restring them when the tension drops, right? That's correct. And that's one of the, the main issues we see out there is getting the right players into the right string. So right. Luxlon's awesome. It's incredible. 85% of the top players in the world use it, but it's not for everybody. It right. really isn't. It's really, it's really for the more advanced player, right. somebody that can swing really fast, that hits a lot of topspin. But you know, when we talked earlier about that 3.5 recreational player, I would not recommend Luxlon for them. Oh, really? And the reason is because it, it's still, it, it's not as harsh as Kevlar, but it's still harsh on the arm for somebody that doesn't have that really fast swing speed and, and some of the arm strength built up. So it's, it's for more of that intermediate to advanced player. Right. And then below that, I would certainly recommend a multi-filament right, string. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. And uh, uh, I mean, when it comes to using that hybrid system, right? Like the, yeah. the monofilament and the multi-filament, uh, the mm -hmm. main reason for doing that is because of the feel, is it? Because it softens the, the street bed? 100%. That's exactly okay. right. It's all about the feel. Yeah. Okay. And it's yeah. also more economical to do it like that, right? Um, you, you could argue either way. Um, oh, really? So if, okay. if, yeah, if you have your whole string bed all Luxlon, you know, yeah. all monofilament, yeah. it should last longer than okay. if you do the hybrid. So, okay. so multi-filaments... Again, it depends on your playing style. If you hit a lot of topspin and you use a multi-filament, that's going to break pretty quickly. Mm. Um, but the monofilament will give you more durability. But um, but if you, you you're you're more of a flat hitter and you use a multi-filament, you're going to have fine durability. So that's why for that kind of player, you don't need to use a luxlon or a, mon a monofilament. Use that multi-filament. Get the nice benefits of a soft feel, good touch, right. easier on the arm. So that's right. right generally what I, what I like to recommend. Um, but the, the other thing about Luxlon to note is really the string tension. Right. And on the tension, we're, we're seeing a lot of this trend going as low as possible. Yeah. And, and the reason why is, is that helps again. Yeah. With the arm, it doesn't make it as harsh. Right. Um, you look at like Federer and Nadal, both of those guys are string, stringing their rackets in the 40s, 40 oh, really? pound range. Yeah, so no way. sorry, wow. I don't have the, the kilograms. Yeah, yeah. Right no, yeah. it's funny, we use, uh, we use pounds in Sri Lanka when it comes oh, to- Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So yeah, they're, they're in the 40s. I personally string my racket at 50. Yeah. I, I know in college when we were playing, and I was over 60 pounds, you know, very oh, heavy really? or very wow. tight, but now, right. now I've gone down right. because of the new materials um, too. Right. So the benefit of having the lower tension easier on the arm, right. but then you also get this thing called ball pocketing. So okay. you, you get the ball to stay on that string bed a little bit longer. Longer, right. Yeah, longer. So, so, so it, it catches it, and you get a little bit more spin. It, 
Exactly. A hundred percent. You get more spin and then you have that, that ability to, to place the ball where you want to a little bit more because okay. if it's, if it's, yeah, if it's too stiff, then the ball is just going to bounce off really fast. You don't have right. that ability. Right. Yeah. Right. But then, uh, doesn't it also shoot off a little bit more? Like the catapult uh, effect is greater, right? The, the, the less the, uh, tension. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so, so exactly. So the cool thing about the Luxlon strings that, that I mentioned, and, and you can see this in some, some like really cool videos on, on Luxlon's website, but that, that material naturally snaps back really fast. So oh, if you string right. it out of low tension, you get the ball pocketing, and then it's going to have that slingshot or, or oh, catapult right. effect to give, you, to give you that extra power. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's a lot of information in strings. It can get yeah. people really, really confused. I know, I know, um, I know. So we got to try to keep it high level. and, yeah. and um, uh, make it as simplified as possible. Got it, got it. And, and then also, Greg, when it comes to, you know, string patterns, right? I mean, you see 16, yeah. 15, you see 18, yeah. you know, 18, 20, uh, mm -hmm. probably, you know, those are probably the most common ones, but you also see uh, string patterns which have a, uh, you know, a greater density than that as well. So yeah. um, when, when a player is picking a racket, uh, are those important factors? And like, how does it affect yeah. their game? So generally speaking, the more dense the string pattern, if there's more strings on the racket, like 1820, for example, yeah. you're not going to have as much top spin. Right. You're going to be able to hit more flat balls. Right. You're going to get more durability because your strings won't move as much. Right. And then on the opposite side, when you see a more open pattern, like a 16 by 18, 16 yeah. by 19, that's going to allow the strings to move a little bit more to then help generate more spin. Mm -hmm. And also it's a little bit more, you know, user friendly on the arm when the strings move and absorb some of that, that vibration. Um, so you're going to get more spin from an open pattern, a little easier on the arm. So the, the trend in the marketplace is going away from the dense patterns that we, we saw when you and I were playing in college right. and when Pete Sampras was on tour, now you see more open patterns. Right. You know, Federer uses a, a 16 by 19 more open pattern than he used to. Um, we're seeing that from a lot of players. So 18 by 20, the trend is going down. More people right. want the open pattern right. um, to get more, to get more spin, to, right. to play the modern game. And also it's easier on the arm. Okay. Okay. Got it. Um, in, in Sri Lanka, Greg, we don't have a great demo pr program, unfortunately. Uh, I mean, there are a few, you know, a few guys who would give a few demo records, but it's not, you know, it's not great. It's not easy to get your hands on demo records. Uh, so when a player picks a, a racket for the first time, right? They say the recommended tension is 50 to 60 pounds, right? Yep. Uh, how do you, uh, you know, how do you string the racket? Like what's the tension you, you start off with? So again, what, it's going to be, yeah. yeah it's going to be based been, on, the, on the player, but yeah, go okay. ahead. Sorry. So what I've been advising the players to do is to start off at like, uh, you know, the half point there. So if it's 50 to 65, start at 55 yeah. and then see if it's too much, you know, you know, you go down. If it's too little, you move up. Uh, yep. And that's what I've been advising most of my players to do. Uh, but what do you recommend? I think that's a great general, general rule right in the middle. Um, the, the two other factors that, that I would look at, um, number one is what string is going into that racket? Is it a multi-filament okay. or a monofilament? Okay. If, it, if it's a monofilament, I would go in the lower end of that recommendation. So if it okay. says 50 to 60, I'd do it at 50. That's what I do. Oh, really? um, but if you have a, a multi-filament, you can go on the higher end. Right. Um, so that's, that's one thing. And then the other thing is, is really based on the, the player himself or herself. Are they, are they stronger? You know, what are those benefits they're looking for? Right. Um, you know, I would, I would try to go as low as you can right. just because what we've noticed, um, you know, with, with rackets too, a lot of the rackets out there are quite stiff already. Mm. So in the stiffness in the racket does help create a lot of the, the easy power but then you got to worry about the arm problem. So I always like to err on the lower end of the spectrum in terms of tension, mm -hmm. go as low as you can without feeling that you can't control the ball. So yeah, I, I would look at the type of string going in there and then on the player, him, him or herself on, on what they're looking for. But I like to go lower and that's the trend, the general trend in the marketplace is right. to go lower. Yeah. Right. And um, also, uh, you know, talk about, the gauges in, on the string, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so there's, yeah, there's yeah. Uh, thicker strings and thinner strings. Right. And 
generally speaking, the thinner the string is, the more feel you get, but right. it breaks faster. Right. Right. Thicker the string is, you get more durability, but then you give up some of that feel. So right in the middle of that is a 16 gauge. That's right. kind of the, 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 most, the po most popular selling string in the market. And then you, right. you can go into either direction. In Sri right. Lanka, do you guys talk about, uh, do you say gauges or are you yeah. talking more in mil millimeters? No, we go diameter in, in, in gauges. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, six, 16 gauge is the, um, yeah, is the most common for sure. Yeah. Um, and those, those are kind of the, the general characteristics. Yeah, so you get a 16, you get a 15L, you get a 15. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then you get 17. So those are thicker. Yeah, yeah. No, that's thinner. Yeah. Thinner, right. So the higher the gauge, the thinner the string. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And uh, 15L, what, what exactly is that? So 15L is, is just a thicker string um, right. than the 16 gauge. So, you know, every, every um, string company, they have a different way to, to, oh, to kind of measure the strings. Right. I think honestly, the, the best way is in millimeters. Um, right. Luxalon, for example, right. they, they do everything in millimeters. Right. So, right. Um, and the most popular gauge for them is a 1.25 millimeters. Okay. Um, but yeah, it does get a little confusing and tricky when you're talking gauges 16 to 15, right. 15 is bigger than 16. Yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's a little, okay. it's a little tricky, but, but 16 yeah. gauge. Yeah. That's, that's the one I'd recommend to start with for sure. Okay. So 15 L and a 15, are they the same? Is it just the way it's marketed or no. is 15 L slightly it, bigger? Uh, 15 L would be slightly bigger, but okay. it's really the way it's marketed. Yeah. It doesn't make right. much sense. Uh, okay. I don't even know what the L stands for, but it's just okay. a, yeah. But some, some companies put, so the, yeah, the L is, is bigger. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, and from what I gathered from you, Greg, you're basically saying that like uh, the string you use can really make an impact on the, on the spin you impart on the ball. Big time. Yeah. The, the string is a big thing. You know, you hear interviews with a lot of professional players and they, and a lot of them say that the string is what really changed uh, the game of tennis, right. uh, more than the, more than the, the rackets, rackets actually. Okay. Yeah. So the string is a big deal. It's, it's, right. um, you know, it's hard to find that right string for your game because there's right. so many choices out there. Right. But, um, I think, you know, if, if you want, you and I can sit down and kind of, you know, list out the top five choices out there and, and, right. uh, you know, make those as, as good starting points for people. Cause it is overwhelming. There's so many options. It's, it's hard to know where to begin. Right. But hopefully, understanding the difference between a multi-filament monofilament kind of helps that that player's journey to choose the right string right right so i'm, I'm using the you know the laxalon strings that uh i got from you great uh, yeah great. are you the, are you doing a hybrid hybrid or the full hybrid okay good yeah great. hybrid so the the laxalon uh, alu rough on the mains uh -huh. good and then uh, yeah the wilson um is it uh, i don't know it's a synthetic string what is that the Maybe NXT? NXT, that's right. Perfect. Yeah. So yeah. the, yeah, the, the Lux, yeah. Oh, oh the is Lux it Sensation? One. I think it's Sensation. Maybe Sensation. So yeah. both of those are both multi-filaments. Um, right. And NXT is a little bit more premium okay. uh, string, plays a little similar, more similar to Natural Gut, but Sensation is one of our top selling strings, plays great. Yeah, right. and I was gonna say, uh, you're in good company because the Luxlon Alu Power Rough is what Roger Federer uses. So that was a good, good, good choice. Yeah. So uh, compared uh, to the, the normal one, the Alu Rough actually gives you more spin. Is that, is that correct? A little bit more. So yeah. the texture on the ball does help bite into the ball right, to, right. to then kind of grip it and right. produce more spin. Right, because yeah. it has like uh, mini kind of grooves in it, right? That makes correct. it rough. Yeah. That's correct, yep. Okay, yep. okay. So, so Greg, I, I'm just going to really quickly summarize uh, what you said from the beginning, um, sure. right? Um, so uh, at the start, you said that like a kid uh, basically switches over to a 27 inch racket at around the age of 11, but there is no hard and fast rule about that. It depends on their height, uh, their skill level, and also their strength, right? Um, Correct. Yeah. And, and when switching over to... Um, a 27 inch racket, you recommend a, a racket that weighs about 260 grams and uh, 100 square inches, correct? Correct. Right. And uh, with regards to using a bigger head size, so you said that all the rackets uh, at that weight, so around 260 grams, are about 100 square inches, and you recommend that for somebody who is uh, starting out in tennis for a player that's like a 3.5. 
you know, in the USDA rating system. And also for a kid who's just switching over from a junior racket to a senior racket, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. And uh, when it comes to, to grip sizes, you were saying that uh, there is uh, no real science, but we're seeing a shift towards smaller grips because the game has, uh, you know, has evolved and people are looking to impart more spin. And then the smaller grip basically allows players to get more spin on the ball. Correct. Yeah. D d does it affect, uh, you know, is there any uh, correlation or any relationship between the grip size and the power that a player can generate on the, uh, on the yeah. ball? Certainly. So the smaller the grip um, right. does allow you to swing faster. The faster right. you swing will generate more power. So yes, um, but there is a point of diminishing returns. So for right. example, if you, you and I tried to use a size zero grip, Right. You know, we wouldn't have the stability to really swing that fast. Right. But if you look on the, the other end of the spectrum, a 5.8 doesn't allow you or I to kind of let our wrist be free and right. swing fast. Right. So a, a smaller grip certainly will give you more power. Right. You don't want to go too, too small. Right. But uh, if you or I were using a size 2 or 3, that's, that's perfect. Um, because, yeah. When you have a smaller grip, it, it definitely allows your, your, your hand to move more freely and you, right. can, you can swing that through the air much, much quicker, much, much faster. Right. And in Spain, uh, as I told you, I was there last year. I know they kind of really encourage their players to use a small grip because uh, uh, one of the coaches we met was a guy called Joffrey Porta. I think you might have heard of him. He was uh, Carlos Moya's coach growing up and also Nadal's as well. And uh, he says in Spain, they... Uh, you know, the concept that they push to the players is basically throw the racket on the forehand. So it should be like, you know, like throwing the racket. And for that, yeah. a, a smaller grip basically helps. So uh, Yeah, that makes, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. And, yeah. and if you look at the way a lot of those Spanish players like Nadal are playing the vertical swing, yeah. you can't do that with a big grip. It just, you That's know, right. you don't have enough freedom of movement in your wrist to do that. But a smaller right. grip does allow you to have that more vertical swing. For sure, right. and, that's, and that's why we're seeing this general shift in the market towards smaller grips is more people are looking for topspin. They're looking to hit that more vertical swing right. as opposed to what we used to see with like Chris Everett, you know, just right. very straightforward, a lot right. of slice and cut. You don't right. see that anymore. So right. in, in order to help aid in getting more spin, a smaller grip helps. Right, right, got it. And then uh, we also spoke about uh, the weight on the racket and you said if a player wants to increase the weight by about 20 grams you encourage the player to get to move in for a new racket rather than use lead tape because it affects the balance of the racket right that's correct it, it does change the playability of that racket and it's again it's very it's a science it's very tricky i mean we spend right. years and years of research and development to get the right. balance point correct on these rackets we're, right. we're putting them through trials after trials and 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 we're getting feedback and, and making iterations and changes but we're, we're doing this in a lab you know we're, right, we have right. engineers working on this we have a lot of play testers doing this to get it right right and for for most people like you or i to, to try to change that and right. add weight in certain areas it's it's going to be tricky i mean you right. might be able to get it get lucky and get it right but it is going to change that the playability of that racket pretty significantly so that's why if you're talking 20 grams or more, you might be better off getting a new racket that's, that's perfectly balanced as opposed to trying to do it yourself. Right. And, and Greg, what about these guys who do, uh, you know, racket balancing and weight balancing? There are some guys out there. Yeah. I know a lot of pros send in their rackets to get their rackets balanced. Uh, yep. So they kind of uh, increase the weight by adding lead tape, right? They do in, in, okay. in certain places and, and they know exactly where to do it based okay. on all a lot of experience so those are right. professionals so yeah if you right. have one of those guys right. then certainly they they could do it but if it's right. more of a layman like you or me trying to do it right it's kind of tough to get that right right so, but but then yeah. if it's just like five grams or ten grams that's fine right you, you I, I think so yeah at, that, yeah at at that point yeah you could maybe even put a little lead tape under the you know the handle of the racket you could remove your grip you right. could put it there Right. Um, or yeah, you, you could place it um, on, on the, the head. throat of the racket or on the head of the racket. Yeah. Right. But, it, but it will, yeah, it, it will slightly change the balance. So sure. depending where you put the lead, 
Sure. If you put the lead more in the um, the handle, then it's going to make the racket more head light. Right. So, and that will help you generate more more top spin. But then conversely, if you put it in the head, you'll get that more hammer effect. Right. Uh, it'll it'll more follow power. a little bit more, a little bit more power. Yeah. More power, but less top spin. Correct. Okay. Right. And then uh, moving on to the strings, we have the monofilaments, and then we have the uh, the multifilaments. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, the multifilaments have a softer seal, uh, and the monofilaments are probably a little stiffer. But do they give you more power? The, mo the monofilaments. That's correct. Yeah, more power, more durability. More, yes. more power, more durability. Okay, got it. Uh, yeah. And what we're seeing right now is the the hybrid version, where a lot of players use uh, a mix of the monofilament and the the multifilament. Uh, and the main reason for that is kind of to soften the string bed, right? Correct. So to get you know the 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 best of both worlds. So you have the right. benefit of the feel right. uh, and the touch of the multifilament, but then you have the power and the durability of the monofilament. So. Right. Right. Great, man. That was. Uh, I mean, I really learned a lot. That was very informative. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure my kids can learn a lot from this as well. And I'm Great. more informed now too. To uh, <laughs> to uh, to advise the kids. So. Uh, I Excellent. mean, I think I was kind of on the, the, the right track, but it's interesting to know the science behind this. And uh, mm -hmm. when, it, when it comes to strings, though, in terms of this monofilament and multifilament, I, um, you know, I didn't really know a lot. I, I knew about Kevlar and I knew about polyester and I knew about synthetic yeah. and natural, but I didn't know what uh, exactly the difference were between the two. So that's uh yeah really great man i really really appreciate uh you taking the time for this 